I couldn't sleep last night because I was thinking about what I'm gonna read today. Looks like anal beads to me, but I guess what do I know? Ah! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> I don't understand the concept of fun. Just before we get into this week's vlog, I would like to introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video, which is Serious Readers. Serious Readers are a UK-based company that manufacture phenomenal daylight lamps that make use of daylight wavelength technology to provide the closest replication of daylight that you can pretty much get in a lamp. All of the lamps from the Serious Lights range are also custom built to your specifications. You have a ton of customization options ranging from the weight of the base of the lamp, depending on how portable you would like it to be. You also have the option of having two heads on the lamp and there's even a cordless option if you would like to be able to take your light to somewhere where you're not going to be close to a power outlet. I have been trying serious lights out for I think it's a, a couple of months now and honestly I am obsessed. If you guys have ever joined me for sprints especially like Patreon sprints you will know how much I hate artificial lighting to the point where I would rather sit in a dimly lit room than turn on a yellow overhead lamp. So having a daylight lamp has opened up a ton of options of things that I can do in the evening because I, I love doing things like jigsaw puzzles but I really struggle to do them if I don't have daylight and it's especially helpful at this time of year when we have a lot less daylight hours than we do in the summer. Now the Serious Lights range obviously provides the perfect light to read by but there are also a whole ton of light adjustment options that make the possibilities of what you can do with this lamp pretty much endless. You can not only adjust the strength of the light but also the width of the beam making this light also perfect for things like I said jigsaws and larger activities that need a little bit of a bigger light. So if you would like to check out Serious Readers and the Serious Lights range for yourself, you can go ahead and click on the link in my description box. And if you enter the code BEC12 at checkout, you will also receive a free compact light with the purchase of any of the lamps from the Serious Lights range. Good morning. I've just woken up. It's like 9am. Had a little bit of a lie in. It's Saturday. I haven't had coffee yet. So if you're wondering, do I actually want to be here right now? The answer is wholeheartedly no, but it's the 1st of October. And what did I say in my TBR video that I was doing for October? I said I was mood reading. So I woke up this morning. I, I couldn't sleep last night because I was thinking about what I'm going to read today. And I woke up this morning not knowing what I'm going to read today. So I've got to pick a book and I do have two, three, four, four books there that are on my TBR as well as a handful of arcs and stuff. But I did say that I wanted to mood read properly. So I don't want to pick one of those right now because I want to give myself a fighting chance as a good start to the month. I want to be a big girl and make a big girl decision about what I'm going to read. But I don't know if it's possible. So it's spooky season. I do want to go spooky. I also want to set myself up for success this month. So I don't want to go for something super chunky. These are filthy. I can't put these on. I won't be able to see a damn thing. I don't want to go for something chunky because I want to actually be able to get through books with some pace, which is quite alien to me. Right now, oh, I didn't think about that. The Ninth House by Lee Bardugo is staring at me. I don't even know. Once I, oh, this might be the one. It's a new release. I've only just got it. Butcher of the Ren by Elena Urquhart, who is one of the morbid podcast hosts, which is why I have this. That's just arrived. It's not very long either. I think it's only about 250 pages. I have Death Note. I have the Resident Evil manga. Mexican Gothic by Sylvia, Sylvia? Sylvia Moreno Garcia down there. I also have, I don't know how spooky this is. I feel like it's spooky light also, hello mo. I have Gallant by V. Schwab, not very big. Oh, I just, I don't know. I have so many books, so many. I have The Night Country by Melissa Albert, which is a sequel to The Hazelwood that will get a duology done. Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. I need to turn you this way so you can see I have feed. I really wanna read. Where is it gone? Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Wicked Deep by Cheyenne Shaw, slightly spooky. What is this? This is morning fringe, guys. Wouldn't advise. She is a style icon. Okay, I think I've made it lined up. We're going with the butcher and the rent. Oh, I nearly fell over. So let's set you up, tell you what this is about. We've got some sunlight this morning, which is unusual. It's not feeling like super spooky weird, but I don't need these anymore. The Butcher and the Ren, I only listen, well, I don't only listen to one podcast, that would be a lie. The only podcast that I really listen to like religiously is Morbid, which is a mix of true crime, 
and like spooky ghosty things cryptids as well bigfoot all that kind of stuff and elena along with ash is the host of that podcast so this is like is it a thriller it's like a, a crime slash thriller kind of story i feel like it leans more towards crime than i would usually pick up if it wasn't elena but i just i'm a, a massive fangirl of that podcast i'm obsessed i want merch so i just had to have this book all i really know about it is that it's set in the louisiana bayou and it is about a serial killer and a forensic pathologist who is stalking the serial killer as he's stalking his victims so yeah that's that's i'm going into it with like a basic knowledge but i didn't pick it up for the plot let's be real and it is a short one it's 242 pages annoying because usually with a book like this i would have bought it to have read it and then haul it because it's a thriller type book that's what i do um but this one it's by elena and it's a signed first edition so i'm keeping it and I'm real happy that I have it. Today, we're starting to transition Brie from the living room and kitchen to also like extend her area to my office. So I've got, got her some new toys. I went to be an M and the only thing I could get was Christmas toys. So we now have a massive reindeer and also anal beads. <laughs> Apparently this is a really tough chew toy. It looks like anal beads to me, but I guess, what do I know? We also have to make her day. Oh, she's got the chicken straight away. Um, she has her treat puzzle out. Having a good day, buddy, and you got too many toys. I was planning on doing some filming today, but I sacked it off for later in the week because I have a little bit of a cold, which Curtis has just gotten over a cold just as I've gotten it. And it's not too bad. I'm not as bad as he was last week, but um, I have a little bit of a sore throat and also just a, just a very tiny bit of congestion. So small an amount of congestion that it's just really annoying. <laughs> have it so i didn't want to film and then i imported all of my footage for last week's vlog and it ended up at two hours of raw footage anyway <laughs> so we'll do that another day but i do have a reading update for you guys i didn't actually spend much time reading this weekend on saturday i spent all of my time puppy proofing this room i mean look at this she's ransacked the entire sofa and thrown everything on the floor because she just wanted to lie on the bare sofa and then on sunday yesterday i went to see my dad and drop off his wedding photos that i took and like edited and all of that stuff so by the time i got back last night i have actually made some really exciting plans for later in the year which you guys will find out when they happen i don't want to tell you just because like it makes things a little bit more surprising and it might not even be a big deal to you guys so i don't want to like hype it up that much but i do have a bit of a reading update because this is actually a really quick read it's just i have not really been reading it so i have put it inside the blood and ash book sleeve from lou mccray which i do really like reading hardbacks in these sleeves but i'm over halfway now i only have 107 pages left i'm on page 133 and i'm enjoying it okay i've just seen somebody rate this i think five stars and also steph's just read it and gave it four stars so i feel like i'm kind of waiting for something miraculous to happen in this because it has some horror elements in it which it does say on goodreads like a lot of people have categorized it as horror but i knew from the synopsis and also from the way this is like laid out it reminded me a lot of like crime tv shows that my mum used to watch oh aside from she only used to watch british ones and this very much has the vibe of an american one it's very like almost bones like but a little bit more sinister and we're following this forensic is she a pathologist why can i not remember she's a forensic something called ren the chapters are alternating between ren and also between this guy who's a serial killer and he's been named the bayou butcher and she is desperately trying to find him based on the clues that he's leaving behind on the bodies that he discards and also just based on like what she can tell in her like professional opinion from being a forensics specialist the chapters do alternate but i don't think that they're linear because they don't match up like they feel very different in time like i'm pretty sure at the minute the chapters i'm reading from the butcher are at night while the chapters from ren are in the daytime so i'm expecting later on for these to kind of like line up cleverly or there to be a clever reason why they're not actually linear but um nothing's quite adding up right now because the victims that are being found are not matching the victims from the perspective of the killer and i'm enjoying it okay but it is just leaning a little bit too much towards crime for me with the characters and the way that the i guess the plot is structured and i do think it is a tad overwritten there is a lot of dialogue in here and some of the dialogue 
could be written as like an inner monologue or embedded into the actual text of the book instead of in conversations between characters. And Ren herself is very logically minded, very black and white. And I can definitely relate to that because I also am a very logically as opposed to emotionally driven person. And that is very evident in the way that this book is written. But then also we have the serial killer who is also very cold and very clinical. So it feels like there's not a whole lot of differentiation in the writing. And I do feel like it is very intentional because it has been very clearly put forward as both of these characters are very cold, clinical, analytical people. I, I don't know, I feel like I just wanted more of a variety in character for it to not feel quite as flat. As well as that, I do listen to Morbid. I listen to Morbid every day. I haven't listened to any today, but I will be making dinner in just over an hour and I will be listening to Morbid. So I know, I'm not going to say that I know Elena or anything, but I've spent a lot of hours listening to Elena talk while I've been listening to the podcast and I can see things that I know to be very Elena-like within the text of this book. And this is, I don't know if you guys will have heard me say in passing before that I don't like to no authors too much and I try my hardest not to pay too much attention to authors on social media because then I start to see their personalities within the book and it breaks the immersion for me because I'm thinking about the author as opposed to being immersed in the story. That being said it is a very quick read, it is a page turner in that I don't even, I don't know what the end game of this is going to be because I believe it's the first book in a series so I don't know whether Ren is going to go on and like deal with more crimes and more killers or whether it's going to end up that this guy ends up on court and it's a continuation of Ren versus the Butcher. But there is just something about the book, possibly the fact that the chapters are so short and that the prose is so kind of like bare and non-descriptive that is, is making me go through this book quite quickly and not want to put it down when I have picked it up. So my feelings towards it are very lukewarm at the minute. I am hoping for something a little bit clever to happen towards the end because if not it will just kind of be like a standard story and I don't feel like there's a whole ton of tension. Like I don't feel on edge in the more horror elements which are the elements that are from the perspective of the killer as he is doing the things that he's doing. So that is where I'm up to. I am hoping that, that I can finish this tonight. I did float the idea of a fortnight date to Ryan but we'll see. Like he hasn't got back to me yet but hopefully I will find some time to read the last 100 pages of this and I have also just received an Amazon parcel. It's very thin so I don't know what it is but we are about to find out. It's a very very small book. Oh my god it's the dare by Harley LaRue. Is it Sophie that sent this? A gift from Sophie, the funniest Patreon member. Ma ha ha unfortunately for you, I know where you live now, so you better read this if you don't want me in your basement in a Curtis wig. This is making Sophie seem really unhinged, which to be fair is a, a fair summary. It says, you know you want to read Hot Clown Smut for Halloween. So this is a short, assumedly smutty book from the author of Her Soul to Take, Harley LaRoe. And the thing that's like kind of put me off this, like Sophie, I, I liked, I loved her soul to take. I gave it five stars. This is contemporary, so a little bit different. But then Sophie mentioned that it's it's clown smart, which did like put me off it a little bit because I don't know how I feel about that. But I believe that it is a smutty romance that is set at a Halloween party and that is why it's clown smart. Also just realised that I think this is a guy like pulling his own face apart. Okay, it's like a popular girl, like outcast boy kind of romance, which to be fair, I am a sucker for those. But the main character is a prom queen and captain of the cheer squad. And the main guy is the freak of the school, Manson Reed. And then it says a lot changes after high school. A freak like him him never should have ended up at the same Halloween party as her. He never should have been able to beat her at a game of drink or dare. Losing the game means taking the dare, a dare to serve Manson for the entire night as his slave. I do believe, I think Sophie said that there's a degradation kink in this as well, but I also know, is there a full list of kinks in here? Harley LaRue's normally quite good at that. Yeah, I have actually this morning just generated the prompt for my monthly or bi-monthly, depending on the tier, 24 hour Patreon readathon. And that is happening. If any of you guys are interested and want to look into it, it is going to be in the week this time because I promised everybody like a weekday one every once in a while. So this one is going to be a Thursday and Friday and it will be starting at 7 p.m. on the 13th of October. And I want to do things a little bit differently this month because I am mood read and I don't really have a TBR. I feel like I'm setting myself up for failure with 24 hour readathons because I just kind of read whatever I'm currently reading, which tends to be like a full length book. So um, I want to set myself up for success a little bit like I have 
with this vlog and you know the month in general and this would actually be perfect and fit the prompt perfectly so maybe i'll be reading this one very very soon but not me just realizing that i've just done this entire vlog clip with a massive like toothpaste strip right down the front of my jumper i need to stop brushing my teeth after i've got dressed like it's it's becoming a problem two three four score i don't know but i'm trying to figure this out on my own take me to paradise and call me back home make me feel young again as i'm growing old there's some things you can't control but i think i know a thing or two about love 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 Yes, my darling one. Yes. <laughs> Stop it. But please. Ah, my heart falls. And I do have an update for you guys. I only have two minutes left on my SD card. So I'm going to go delete some stuff and then I'll be back. Good afternoon. So I have not been having a great time with my cold today. I woke up this morning and wanted to do absolutely nothing, but alas, the show must go on because I have a product launch this Friday. So Brie, Operation Office Dog is going like okay as well. She's pretty fine in this room. It's just she keeps going into other rooms, which um, makes me nervous. And she's also stealing boots. She stole five different boots today. So I had therapy this morning and then I had an interview and I spent the rest of my day making candles so the angles just changed dramatically because the book that I want to talk to you guys about was actually propping up the camera but I have finally managed to finish The Butcher and the Round by Elena Urquhart and I didn't love it I didn't hate it but I didn't love it I gave it three stars overall I just really didn't like the writing and while there was an element of it like I said yesterday I pretty much covered everything that I really have to say about this yesterday but while there was that element that kept me turning pages because I found it to be very fast paced I feel like there was a lot of plot holes in here that I could have like gone into about how like at one point Ren mentions that she has only ever seen one other person killed the same way as one of the serial killer's victims in her entire career which would be super dramatic and like super oh my god if her career wasn't less than seven years because we know that at a place in her past like seven years ago she was doing something different she was young so she wasn't doing what she's doing now. So we know that it's been less than seven years that she's been in this profession. So having only seen one person murdered in this, or like having died in this specific way, not really a big deal if you ask me. Um, but there was just little things like that, not gaping plot holes, but things that just didn't quite add up. I did find that the plot twist was interesting but i found that when we knew that i kind of just wasn't really as interested in continuing and i don't find the writing to be immersive it's very much like um you're reading a book and you know you're reading a book the entire time because the way it's told it's very much like he said this and then the detective said this and ren said this you know and then the metaphor as well <laughs> i find throughout here didn't really make the most kind of like sense like if you think about it it's just a bit off you know just a little bit off so disappointed because i wanted to love it but it was an all right entertaining read just I, I think it's very very flawed so three stars for that i am keeping it because i love elena i do and it is signed and it is also a sequel there is a cliffhanger at the end of this just so you know because it doesn't really say anywhere that it is a sequel um but there is going to be at least one more book in this series so now that that's done i was at the beginning of the month when i saw what my tbr was going to be i was going to bring you guys like a specifically fantasy romance reading vlog but i feel like in the spirit of mood read october i feel like having a week where i already know like i've got to read these three books is going to stress me out because then 
I don't know. It's hard to explain how my brain works sometimes, but like if I don't read the first book in that vlog as fast as I feel like I can, then I'll start to feel like panicky, like, well, this only leaves me like half a day to read the second book if I want everything done by Sunday. If it's not done by Sunday, it has to be done by Tuesday at the latest, otherwise it can't go up on this day and I have to rearrange my schedule. Just a little bit of a look into my um scattered thought process there but i decided instead of doing that anyway because like i don't want that for me oh my god i have you guys see i have wax i can't see anything so i don't know where the focus is but i have wax in my hair <laughs> but yeah so i i just i i don't wanna because we've been doing themed reading vlogs quite a few themed reading vlogs all this year so we're just gonna go with the flow so what i've actually decided to do is intersperse the four books that are actually on my tbr between mood reads and this reminds me a lot actually of how i used to read before i had a channel so i had a jar with like like a tbr jar with different colored slips of paper in and i think the purple ones were series and the white ones were standalones so i would pull out a purple piece and like find out what series I was gonna read and I would just read that series in order like straight away which is why I didn't have a whole ton of series unfinished until I had a booktube channel and then in between every book in the series I would read like pull out a standalone and read a standalone in between so um yeah we're interspersing things I'm gonna crack on with the patreon pick that I should have read in I think July now Ugh. Ugh. So officially this one is Marley's pick, but it is in my Patreon part at least three times, I think. There's quite a few people who want me to read this series. And all I know about the Black Dagger Brotherhood is that it is this group of like vampire warrior type people and each book in the series follows a different one of the warriors and like whoever the love interest is going to be and this one is following wrath now i have read the first chapter of this so i am 12 pages into it i need to get a bookmark i can get a bookmark right now i fit in as well because this is the buffy bookmark for my patrons for september so from what I can tell from the one chapter I've read, there is a vampire who has a daughter who's half human. And because she's half human, like she might turn into a vampire, she might not. It's kind of like a born as a vampire kind of situation as opposed to a human dies turns into vampire situation. And this guy wants to give her to Wrath to train for whatever reason, like to help her through her transition if she does end up transitioning. So that is pretty much the extent of my knowledge on this one, but I will of course let you guys know a little bit more as I get into it. I have been told by quite a few people that it is a pretty quick read, which is great. And from the one chapter that I've read, I like the writing style, which is good news. So that is what I'm gonna be getting on with for the next couple of days. And then the, oh, I got something in the mail today that I wanted to show you because it is from a small business. I ordered this a couple of weeks ago and the I got it off Etsy. I will link the shop in my description box as I always do. But the estimated delivery date on this was like the end of October, which I was a little bit sad about because it is like a spooky season sweatshirt. But it arrived today and I'm thrilled. I haven't put it on because I, I'm a crusty butthole today. Like I accept it. But it is a Taylor Swift spooky season sweatshirt that says what a ghostly scene. It is a cropped one as well. And I will take some pictures wearing it. Put them on Instagram when... <laughs> I'm feeling I need to wash my hair, which I'm doing tomorrow morning, and get my life together at some point this week. But today is just, it's not that day. I'm very much just like sitting in having a cold right now. So the lyric from this is obviously from My Tears Ricochet. This is not the only spooky season Taylor Swift sweatshirt that they have. And actually <laughs> the majority of their shop is Taylor Swift sweatshirts, t-shirts. They have like a, a lounge set, I think. And the shop is called Taylor and Lucas. Like I said, I will link it down below if you're interested, but I'm so happy with this. And I'm really excited to wear it. But yeah, I think I've taken up enough of your time and also my own time now. everything i've ever hoped to build welcome to outfit of the week it is almost 5 p.m and we are heading into leeds to see machine gun kelly tonight i scored these tickets on a whim when they were first announced it was really weird actually the way that they announced machine gun kelly there was no announcement they just kind of like i got an email or i saw something that said that they were on sale so i snapped them up and i'm making curtis go with me he hates his life he doesn't want to go but he's coming so this is the outfit of the day we all know i love 
tube skirt. We all know I love some check. So we have the yellow tube skirt and also the Taylor Swift crop sweater that I just got. And then I'm wearing the usual, you know, the polo neck sleeveless bodysuit underneath. I'm at an age now where when I go to gigs, especially ones like Machine Gun Kelly, I know that I'm gonna be one of the oldest people there and it's going to destroy my soul a little bit, but I'm determined to have a good time anyway. We don't have the best seats because actually tickets were really expensive, but the good thing about Leeds Arena is that no matter where you sit, the view is really good. So I'm not too bothered about that and I'm just, I'm determined to have a good time. I'll probably have a couple of beers. Hopefully, fingers crossed, have a really great night. I've heard really good things about the show itself as well. The fuck just happened. Hey, hey, Leeds, don't fucking worry. There will be no technical difficulty to stop us from doing this fucking shit. Let's play that song back again. Let's give them the show they came for. Good afternoon. Happy Saturday to those of you who celebrate. I don't know what I'm saying. It's been a while since I brought you guys a reading update or any kind of update. Machine Gun Kelly was king. Had a great time. That man really knows how to put on a show. And can you name a hotter couple than Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox? Because I truly just cannot. Brie has even more new toys now because I actually picked her up a bag of, I think it was like 15 teddy bears for three pounds to keep her occupied. So she's having an absolutely great time. I've just given her the first of them so that I could film this update without wondering whether she was chewing on shoes. I've started The Midnight Club, which I put on Netflix yesterday. Didn't even realize it was Mike Flanagan. Just looked interesting from the cover. Needed something to watch while I was eating because Curtis was out. Put that on, had the scare of my life because I very quickly in the opening credits realized that it was indeed Mike Flanagan and I'm eager to continue on with that. Watched Hocus Pocus 2. The witches, amazing, flawless. Could the Sanderson sisters be anything less? But the film itself was really bad. <laughs> did not appreciate it. And then aside from that, I've nearly finished Dark Lover and I haven't even told you anything about it. And you know, I am enjoying this 
more than I thought I would because when people are telling me that they're enjoying paranormal romance or that some series are really really good I feel like you're not wrong but you like different things in books than me I'm not a light-hearted person okay I don't understand the concept of fun I actually I don't know why this is I enjoy watching people have fun more than I enjoy partaking in fun myself so a lot of people can like fly through a 300 page paranormal romance um acknowledge that it's trash but have a really good time I can't have a good time because I'm just like this is bad it's not good whereas this I'm actually really enjoying it so we're following this young woman called Beth who is a journalist content one in the first chapter starts off with a sexual assault that is the only time that it happens throughout the book but like straight off the bat we have a sexual assault scene in the first chapter and she is actually the daughter of of a vampire but she doesn't know her mother died in childbirth she's been in the foster care system and her father knows that she's approaching the age where she's possibly going to transition into a vampire which is something that is dangerous and like some people don't survive it so her father asks Rath who's the king of vampires or the king of yeah he's the king of vampires there's a different breed there's normal vampires then there's a black dagger brotherhood Rath's the king and Darius asks him to help Beth out so that she makes it through her transition now Rath initially says no however we also have a band of like vampire slayers within this world that are they've sold their soul to omega which is kind of like the devil in exchange i think for the ability to kill vampires and they kill beth's father so wrath feels really bad because he owes darius so much and agrees to help beth out and obviously like it is a romance between those two which is sad because i'm pulling for butch and i have heard that butch gets his own book which i'm really excited about i didn't think he would to start off with because he is just like a, a human character in here but I do have it on good authority that he has his own book and I'm really hyped for that because I I like Butch a lot more than I like Wrath but there's just so much going on in here that is so much more interesting than your typical like paranormal romance that I've read in my experience which does kind of explain the length of this as well because it's longer than a typical paranormal romance that I've read as it just has like so much more in terms of like perspectives and details and plot so the main focus of this is definitely the romance between them and Beth coming to terms with like the fact that vampires exist all of that kind of stuff wrath is very much closed in on himself he has some trauma from like his past life he's actually blind or almost blind like he knows he's going to lose his eyesight completely eventually but he is visually impaired and has been for his entire life which i did not expect going into this especially from the first book in the series like those kind of topics are normally things that are brought into series like this a lot later down the line than book one because book one tends to be your very standard like generic alpha male and then there's more diverse and more like interesting pairings a little bit later down the line it's also multi-perspective it's third person but we do follow like a couple of members of the police force we have beth who's a journalist there's raf there's the rest of the members of the black dagger brotherhood which i believe there are six brothers in total and there's also like a vampire woman called marissa who's related to wrath in some way not related as in family but like to do with wrath in some way and it's actually really interesting it's a really quick read when i sit down and read it. i mean i'm on page 344 and it truly doesn't feel like it's taking me any effort to get here and there's enough going on within the plot and the world that's keeping me really interested and i wouldn't mind going straight into book two after this and i am really excited to get to book three because apparently like book three is the one that follows everyone's favorite brother which i believe is zadist which is interesting i'm interested to see what happens in his book based on what i know about him so far i'm also really liking some of the banter between them like there's this one scene in here where wrath is essentially having an argument with one of his brothers about women and just the way that wrath insults i think it's torment that he's arguing with he insults torment and torment's comeback was just like fire but i will say that there are elements of this that are a little bit dated language in here that we typically don't use in 2022 especially when it comes to things like sex workers as there is like a string of sex workers being murdered in the plot line of this book the brothers are kind of being blamed for it and they're swearing that it's not them so yeah it is like it's 2006 i think 2005 that this was published so it's kind of expected for it to be a little bit dated especially with it being a paranormal romance to start off with but considering that i expected it to feel a lot more dated than it does and very much fall into the conventions of the paranormal romance genre from the early 2000s that i don't like as you see with like sucky stackhouse which is the one that i go to every single time but yeah very pleasantly surprised by this one so far i have about 115 pages left i don't know what i'm doing today today is the one day where i really just don't have any plans so i'm gonna put my office back together because 
look, she's digging. Is she digging in my blankets? No, she's licking her foot. But like, she's just, she destroys everything she touches essentially. So I want to put things to rights um, and have a hoover around, even though there's not much point because she'll just destroy it again within minutes. And then I might just put around. I have some stuffed toys to sew up because of course I do. And a couple of other little bits like that. But hopefully um, I'll also find some time to finish the last 100 pages of this as well. Good morning. We are once again before coffee on Sunday. It is five past nine and last night i stayed up to finish dark lover by jr ward and i really enjoyed it i gave it four stars so it's probably the highest rated paranormal romance that i've ever read and i had a really good time i think because we had so much more going on and it was very clear from the offset that jr ward had created like a wider world here with multiple characters and like a plot that's going to get much larger that it was much more engaging to me i will say in terms of like the romance and the smart it was okay like it was decent wasn't particularly doing it for me wouldn't die for these two and towards the end they did get a bit cheesy in a way that i really really hate like you can tell that you were wrapping up like their book as a couple would definitely continue not sure if i would recommend <laughs> If you're a fan of paranormal romance as well, you've probably already read this series, but in terms of paranormal romance, I don't think it's bad. And the highlight for me, aside from like the fact that it actually had a bit of a plot, or like you can tell that there's a big plot going on within this world, um, was probably the banter between the six brothers. And I really like the dynamic that they have going on. I think Curtis is ready to go out. Are you ready to go out? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ready to clap some cheeks? No. <laughs> Bye. Bye. What time are you coming home? Okay, I'll be watching after anyway. Okay, so now that he's gone, thank you, Marley, very much for recommending this. I'm glad that I finally read it because, like I said, paranormal romance is kind of a staple. And a big thank you to Jessica for gifting this one to me. So, I need to pick a mood read now, which. I'm really excited about it, but I have no idea what I'm going to pick. So first, I'm actually going to open this Amazon parcel that arrived that I believe is a gift because maybe it'll sound really exciting and I'll want to read it. Oh, this is Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. Is this from Bish? Yes, thank you for doing the interview for me and thank you for constantly providing the best content. Trash Commander from Vish. Vish had to do a interview for one of her uni projects and I helped her out with that. So she sent me a book as a thank you. This is very, very pretty and I really like the copy of this. It says, to the rest of the world, he was the little boy who went missing on the 4th of July. To me, he was everything. My heart hasn't been the same since he disappeared, but I've learned to build my life around that missing piece. 22 years later, the last thing I expect is for that missing piece to come back. His name is Oliver Lynch and this is his story. This is our story. Do I wanna read this? I wasn't feeling romance. Do I want to read this? Kind of. Kind of do. It's only 320 pages. What have you got? Oh, she nicked the tag off the Amazon parcel. And my other, I literally have no idea what I was going to read because I don't know what I'm in the mood for. I just kind of thought, let's stick away from romance for a little bit. Um, um, <laughs> should I just do it? Should I just read this? I know Aaron did recommend me a fantasy romance last night that I was tempted by. It's on KU, but it's 400 and something pages. So I'm not sure that I can actually handle reading a 400 page book on my iPad right now. I really need to get like a Kindle Paperwhite, you know, the ones with like the lights that don't hurt your eyes. But I have an iPad and I have a Kindle Fire, so I don't really want to. But let me get you the name of the fantasy romance that Aaron recommended. It is called Rain and Ruin by JD Evans. And she said it's got a slow burn, it's really well written and the elemental magic is cool. So I mean, sounds good to me. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. Cause I do wanna stay, I wanna stay on theme with spooky season and this has a little bit of like a mystery element going on the text considering it's a romance and it's only 300 pages the text is kind of small in here but like this is as, as far as romances go this has like a little bit of a mystery element my heart if i was like truly mood reading without wanting to stay on theme for spooky season i want to read some sci-fi i often have urges to read sci-fi actually but we'll save that we'll go for this thank you vish very well timed as well because i'm looking for something with just like a little bit of an edge for like spooky season in it Here's where the story ends 
So others may start Moments together For a lifetime apart And I wish I could explain it But I guess I don't know anything about love Yes, darling. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> not again. This is the second time in one vlog that we've been tackled to the ground. Get a dog, they said. It would be fun, they said. Brie is um, suffering from a bad case of bad eggery because I went for my nail appointment this morning. Sit. And so she was in her crate while I was gone, which means that when she was out, when I let her out, when I got back, I was only gone for like two hours. She decided <laughs> that she just wanted to be a little shit. A little shit. You are a little shit. And so that's what we're dealing with right now. But yesterday I had the after watch along with my patrons, which was eight hours. It was from like 2 p.m. until just before 10 p.m. But I didn't get a whole ton of reading done. But I have made a little bit of a dent in this book. I'm 94 pages into it now, but I read 62 pages yesterday. And I'm having a good time with it. It's not leaning into the drama as much as I expected it to, but it's still like a really compelling read although I'm not sure that I'm buying the romance so I'm not going to speak too much about this today because I'm going to carry it over to next week's vlog. It says a love story I don't know if that technically means it's a romance and I have heard from my patrons since I picked this up that it's actually um that is actually supposed to be a little bit of a sad one as well. But this is following a boy who was kidnapped on the 4th of July when he was four years old. And the prologue is when he's just been found. And he was pretty much kept in a basement and told that there was an atomic bomb so that the world wasn't safe anymore. So he spent 22 years in this confinement believing that his captor lived in a bunker next to him and that the world had pretty much ended so it wasn't safe for him to go outside. He very quickly finds out that this is a lie and he's reconnecting with the girl who lives next door. There's some things that I don't super believe about it, like how the, because on the back of this it says, to the rest of the world he was the little boy who went missing on the 4th of July, to me he was everything. I don't have too many memories of when I was very, very small. I vaguely remember friends that I had, like there's a boy when I was in primary school like very early on that I used to play kissy chase with um I can't remember what he looks like or anything at all and I don't remember our friendship aside from the fact that he sent me a Christmas card once and we used to play kissy chase I imagine that if something traumatic happened in my childhood where like my best friend had gone missing or something and obviously that would be a big deal to the community and the people around me especially if it happens like my neighbor I imagine that I would remember that but I'm not sure that I would remember having such a deep connection with this person who I was friends with for a very small portion of my life because realistically and they would have only made friends and had like actual memories and been able to do things together for like two years maximum so it's a very small percentage of her life but I am enjoying it so far the way the writing style is it reminds me of like Colleen Hoover, KJ Sutton and I've had a look at Jennifer Hartman I didn't realize that Jennifer Hartman was the author of like Still Beating which is a serial killer romance that I want to read and I feel like she's known for quite what do you call them I guess Still Beating is definitely dark I'm not sure whether this definitely deals with dark topics and I'm not sure whether you consider it to be like a dark romance you can't have the paper but I am only like at this point a third into it and like I am into it I'm just not 100% buying it right now so that is where I'm up to with that going into next week's vlog which once again is going to be a little bit of a variety vlog. I also have quite a few plans next week. Like I'm going to a couple of places. I'll be busy over the weekend, but in a way where I can read a lot, hopefully, fingers crossed. And it's also my Patreon 24 hour readathon next weekend. So we have a lot going on and next week's vlog is sure to be packed. So please do stay tuned if you are at all interested. Once again, a big thank you to Serious Readers for sponsoring this video. And if you would like to check out Serious Readers for yourself, please remember that you can use my code Becca12 to pick up a free compact light with any of the lights from the serious lights range but i do hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and i'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no